The attribute from PiecesSop is designed to match up a piece of geometry that you'd like to instance to a specific point. By default with the copy to points, you don't have a way of really telling it how to take, let's say, rock number one and attach it to a specific point. Unless you're trying to use the variant attribute, and in that case, you would have to create the variant attribute on the geometry so that it can match up to a specific point in the point cloud. Well, that whole workflow has been simplified since 18.5. And let me show you how you can go about setting this up. In our scene, here are the points that we're going to copy to. And we have a bunch of rocks over here that are all at the origin. With these rocks, we have about, I think, three or four of them. And as we copy to points over here, right now we have three or four rocks happening per point. So it's not like there's one rock per point happening. There's nothing there to select a specific rock and match it to a specific point. That's where the attribute from pieces comes into play. In order for this to work, we need to first of all go to our rocks and we need to create a unique ID for each item that we'd like to instance. So traditionally, we would do that with the connectivity SOP. It looks at what meshes are connected to each other and it creates a unique ID for each one of those meshes. If you have a complicated mesh with multiple detached parts, then you don't wanna use the connectivity. You'll instead probably just need to create a manual attribute using an add attribute with a ID. The main thing though, is that we need to keep track of what this attribute is called. So this is called class by default. I'm going to copy that. And for this piece attribute right here, this also needs to be class because that's the attribute, again, that's being recognized to identify each rock. The second input will take those rocks our first input will take the point cloud. We can then attach it to the copy to points, specifically the points to copy to. And here we go. We have the same thing. Because there's one more step, we then need to go up to the piece attribute on the copy to points and also call this class. Now we have one rock per point. What decides on the rock though? How do we know which rock needs to go to which points? How is that decided? Well, all of the other parameters on this attributes from pieces node is trying to answer that question. It's trying to figure out how you want to select each one of these pieces of geometry. By default, we have cycle. And the way that this works is that we have our point IDs, which are these guys, and it goes through the point IDs in order. And so let's say we start at zero, that will get rock number zero, rock number one will go to one, two, and the minute that you've hit the maximum number of items, it then cycles back to zero. So point number four will then get zero, and then so on and so forth. If you want to change the distribution of, let's say the cycles mode here, all you need to do is set down a sort SOP and you can have very specific control over how the point IDs are set up. So if I say by X, now as we can see, the numbers start at the left at zero and then they go up from left to right. If we look at it from this direction <laughs> right here. So that's what's happening with the cycles. Now, honestly, at this point, I would recommend checking out the user docs to see what everything else does. Patches will give you this sort of patchy distribution of which rock gets selected. We have an, a random noise that selects things like this. And we have a random as well as a map attribute. This map attribute is really, really cool because that allows you to paint specific areas on the terrain, paint attribute values that is, with where you want certain things to go. Also, if you want to paint, let's say, a texture map onto the ground, 
then you might be able to use that as well for dictating where things go. And then lastly, we also have a Vexpression that you can use when trying to decide on a particular rock. But for the most part, that is what this is for. That's the main setup. One last thing for now, we can also use this piece filter to remove certain items from our geometry. So this ID right here can either be a string or an, an integer attribute, depending on what you've specified here in the connectivity. And if you add this in, you are removing that item from the available items to instance. So at zero and one, we're now only left with the rock that has an ID of two. For more videos that are thorough, simplified, and straight to the point, check out cgforge.com, where you'll find resources, one-on-one -on -one consultations, and much more that's all designed to help you achieve your Houdini goals quickly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.